Hey guys, John Cahill from Ebtide Tackle. Quick tutorial guys on Megabass mag drafts. They've, um, they've caught on of recent times as being a great Murray Cod and um, Barramundi bait. We've been using mag draft for about three or four years. Um, first up at um, Copeton, but we're having really good success with it in Mulwala and in particular Lake Ilden. Um, eight and 10 inch predominantly. Um, but also even the little six inch, especially at, at Mulwala, throwing it up on the flats. But for the lakes, definitely the, the eight and the 10 inch. The um, Magdraft is a sick little bait. It works really, really well slow. It's got a really sick little head wobble and the tail does plenty at a very slow speed to, um, to make it enticing. A, a key of a lot of Murray Cod baits is what a bait does slow and this does just what you want, slow. Um, the, as, as it comes with the um, mag hold system, direct fighting system, to be honest, for 90% of bites, this is all you need. Um, most cod like to, to take their baits head first, and for the most part, that's what you get with this especially if you're fishing fluorocarbon line. And we'll talk more about fluorocarbon in another um, tutorial coming up soon. But um, if you're fishing braid, you'll get the odd whack with this bait and um, didn't get a hookup. And the, the thought is always, hey, might I have gotten that hookup with a stinger? Um, I've fished stingers on and off with these things quite a bit and I'll say straight up, I reckon 90% of my hookups come on the front. But there have been a few um, that I've taken on the on a stinger assembly and um, the front hook hasn't been a part of the bite. So you can't rule it out. Um, most recently, Kish, Christian Georgopoulos fishing with me, got a beast um, well over a metre and it was only hooked on the stinger. So it's a fish definitely capable of engulfing this bait down into its gullet, but it was only hooked on the stinger. So hey, it does happen. Um, stingers, now we've rigged them a number of ways. Dacron, on um, mono, on top, underneath. We've done a heap of stuff. But I stumbled across some rigging um, well over a year ago from um, a US um, bass uh, YouTube channel, Tactical Bassin, well worth watching. And they did some rigging on single strand wire, wire sorry, with, um, wasn't with Magdras, it was with Huddleston's. And um, I tried it and it's worked really, really well for us. Andy's been using it as well. I know Thomas Pinter's been using it, the exact, exact same rigging. And we're getting a lot of inquiries. We're getting people now buying the single strand and they're like, how do we rig it? So real quick tutorial on how to rig a mag draft on single strand wire. <coughs> um, straight up I'll say, I think if you're fishing an eight inch, you don't need to do this. If you're fishing the 10 inch bait, there is um, scope definitely to, to run a stinger. So, um, I don't know which one I'll do, it doesn't really matter. Um, they're both 10 inch, white back shad, one of my favorite colors. Um, this will do. Hey, while I'm at it, I'll just quickly show you this, the soft mega bass cases. Really good for storing your mag drafts and, and even hard swim baits. Really, really good for that. So what do we need for this? You need your bait, you need your single strand, and you need whatever hook you're gonna put on, whatever that might be. Um, we love shad hooks, T31s and T21s. This is a 1.0, uh, and to be honest, on the 10-inch bait, a 1.0 shout T31 is all you need. I wouldn't go heavy, you're gonna to start to upset the balance of the bait. Let me say straight up that Megabass have actually designed these baits to run with stingers. If you look on the back of the packet, you'll see right here, it took, talks about assist hook tune. So don't be put off by doing this that you're doing something unnatural. Um, Mega Bass actually talk about doing it, so don't be put off. Righto, single strand wire. Um, if you haven't handled this stuff before, it's very springy, and um, it can be a little bit sharp on the edges. You only really need to use your hands, but just be careful. Um, really, really simple. Just pull the hook out of the harness, lay it forward. Um, lay the wiring 
the wire, sorry, through the hook eyelet, like so. Okay, roughly with two inches, um, two to three inches through, so you've got a tag in, you basically just bend that over. So you've created a loop. And using a little bit of brute strength here, start to twist in roughly a 45 degree crossover using that tag end. Get one or so done at 45, and then you can switch your loops up, sorry, your crossovers, your threading, to be Ninety degree, and once you started, you'll find it actually is quite pliable, and you'll lay these down, these weaves, right behind each other, and it will look relatively neat. And do about half a dozen. Like so. What we want to do now is actually break off that tag end. Now, I could quite simply use these and cut that off close to it, but it does leave a sharp edge that I guess is a little one percenter that it might get in the way, sorry, not get in the way, might get cut by your main line. Basically, you want to put a 90 degree bend in your tag end. Like so, see that there? See that there? 90 degree bend in your tag end. And you twist. You quite simply twist it. And twist, and twist. And this is where it can get a little bit hard on your fingers. It can pinch a little bit. You'll find after a couple of complete twists, it won't take many more than that, it will snap. Should be any time now. There it goes, hear that? And there's your little bit of tag end. And you'll find there what we've got now is no burrs whatsoever on that tag end. There's no sharp points there at all. Now, a quick word on hooks. You can actually just make a loop in the wire and use a split ring so you can change hooks. But I've actually found personally that that creates a lot more opportunities for snag. I don't know why. The hook definitely hangs a little bit lower so for what it's worth, maybe think about not using a split ring and just threading the hook on. Yeah, if you get a bent hook or turn a point over, you're gonna to have to cut this away and start again, but no big deal. It's pretty cheap, right? So what I do here, I've got the wire threading through the eye of the hook, like so. I've got the hook roughly where I want it, near the anal fin of the bait. That's about where I prefer it, maybe even a little bit further along halfway along that anal fin. And now I'm gonna bend the wire up. So I've now determined my length. And that is where I will again start twisting. Same as before, a little bit tricky to just get it started. It wants to spring, doesn't really wanna turn to begin with. But once you get it started, it's gets a lot easier. Just twist, use your thumb, hold the hook in your, in your palm so it's protected. Twist away, twist away, get half a dozen twists done. And 
Try and leave the tag. So you got a big tag here now. See this here, you got quite a large tag. You wanna leave that so it's facing the bait naturally. It actually faces the belly of the bait easily and not in a, in a kind of forced manner. If you've got to twist it a bit more to get it there, so it lines up nicely, do that. And I've actually got to do another half turn to make this line up. Okay, cool. So see this big tag here? What I'm gonna do now is use my side cutters to cut that tag so that it is roughly two thirds to three quarters of the way, the length of the body of the bait. So somewhere around about here is where I wanna cut that wire. And I'll show you why in a minute. Cut, nice and simple, put that aside. Make sure you stuff those in the bin because they are sharp and you do not wanna stand on them. So now with this tag end, I use that to push it straight into the soft belly of the bait, straight as I can get it. And that will lay pretty nice up the belly of the bait there. Pop the original hook back in its place. Straight up the belly into the slot. And you've now got your stinger hanging down below the bait. That little tag that I put up through the middle does a really good job of holding it in place. It will pop out easy, watch. Ding. It won't stop you hooking up on the front hook and it will pop out of the bait nice and easy when a fish grabs it. And you might find yourself fighting it basically with that in the fish's mouth and that to your line. No big deal. No big deal at all. So that quite simply is how we do it. I'll just pop that back in, show you again. Hope that's helpful guys. Um, I guess you'd have to acknowledge it's a tiny bit snaggier with that second hook there. So you know, you gotta be very, really attuned to your snags and running it along snags and you, you can work these over as well. It's not as though like you touch a snag, you're stuck. Um, just don't drive those hooks in, just move your boat over the top, jiggle it off. 95% of the time you're gonna get your bait back and, and you can fish on. Hope that is helpful guys. Um, any comments, any suggestions, for thoughts, views, chuck them in the comments and um, we'll get back to you with a conversation around fluorocarbon soon. Yoo, cheers.